Welcome everybody. And my name is Jae Bom Jung, working discretized mathematics in Ulpen Research. So today I'm gonna talk about the progress in graphene network. So basically I'm gonna introduce some new functions in version 13 related to subgraph isomorphism, coloring, planar graphs, and some control flow graphs. Also some improvement on performance in some area. First, let me show you some new functions. Like I said before, I have some new function in related subgraph isomorphism and graph coloring for new functions. Also the function related to planar graphs and then some function that help you understand control flow graphs. First of all, subgraph isomorphisms. In Mathematica, we have isomorphic functions that help you two graphs are isomorphic each other. Now, not just two graph are isomorphic, if we have some interesting small graph like here, and here's some little bit larger graph, and can we tell this shape, I mean pattern, I just say pattern graph, is inside of this larger graph. So how do we know that? For example, like here, I just have some map, the map each vertex in this pattern graph to the one in the larger one. And using this map, if you can you know, change this the pattern map with this map, and then if we can find those new graph as the subgraph of the larger graph, then we have isomorphic subgraph. And in version 13, we have a couple of functions to help you this process. For example, first, we need to know if those pattern graph you have actually can be mapped into larger graph. For example, here we have small h and larger g. And if you type the isomorphic subgraph q, First argument will be the pattern graph, the small one, and the next is the larger one. And obviously this is true. So now we know H is isomorphic to sum of subgraph in G. And how do we find the map? So to find the, the subgraph isomorphism, the mapping, we can just learn find subgraph isomorphism, H comma G then you got the one subgraph isomorphism map. And also if you want to have multiple map, you can specify the number. If you want three in times three, or you can even say or to get all subgraph isomorphism. Let me just use it short. Oops, right here. Right, there's much more than I know about 48. And you find just map, but what if you just find subgraph in G that is isomorphic to H? Then you have other functions saying find isomorphic subgraph. If you do that, instead of getting map, you actually get a subgraph which is isomorphic to H, which is in G. You can check that by highlight graph. So G comma, okay, let me just do the, then you see this is night subgraph inside of G. So like the fine isomorphic subgraph, you can enumerate subgraph, for example, like three, then now you see the three different subgraph inside of G, which is isomorphic to H. And next, session is about the coloring. So graph coloring, this is problem of coloring the vertices. So for example, this example, if we have the colors that, for example, like same number of the vertex count, then you can color all vertex differently. But that's not what we want. We want to color these vertices 
minimum number. What I mean is like if you have color this one red, and then this adjacent vertices, we call a different color, for example, not red, green. So for example, here, then we color red here, then we want to color green, right? Just keep going. But if you have only two colors, right? Here, red, here, only choice we can have now is green, but you got the same green color right here. So it failed. For example, this one, we probably need more than three. And the, the finding that minimal number is not easy task. So what we can do is we have function called find vertex coloring. This giving you initially giving you the numbers. The different number means different colors. So if you don't want to, the number you actually need color, then you can specify list of colors. For example, here, then you got the different color. And then this is based on vertex uh, matching with the vertex list of the graph. So first vertex with this color, second, third, etc. So to check, this is actually giving nice coloring. Let's run this one. Then you see each vertex have a different color whenever you compare with adjacent vertex, right? And then we have the coloring, same thing, but now it's edgy version. For example, red, green, and here, now you already encountered the issue if you color with two colors. So here, the, the exactly similar function, but now it's edge version. Find edge coloring right now, you can see it's any four needed. And then if we supply color list instead of just default, then you got the actual color and you can do the styling with these colors. So this is, you have nice edge coloring. And next, vertex chromatic numbers. Before we see vertex coloring that return list of colors or integer corresponding to the, each color. But if you just interested in what is the minimal number of coloring, then you just using vertex chromatic number. This function, instead of giving you the list of color or integer, this just giving the minimum number of color you need. So return three for this case. And we see the vertex chromatic number, next function with edge chromatic number, same concept. Now you got the color, I mean integer, which is minimum number to color the edge of your graph. Okay, now we next go look at the, the functions that are related to planar graph. So what is planar graph? It's easily simply say the planar graph is graph that you can draw the, on the plane without edge crossing, for example, like this one. And then when you draw this one, immediately you can see some geometric features. So for example, like a face, they're bounded by these edges, right? So for example, this here, you can see three face inside and then this outer blue means outer face. So you can think of four different faces with this graph. Outer face is not really just infinite. If you think of mapping this graph to the sphere, you also see outer face. Face is kind of bounded already. So, to find out this face, we have function called planar face list. So here's graph, same graph. And if you learn the planar face list over this graph, you got the full face like I explained the, the previous slide. One, two, three, one, three, four, one, four, two. So three internal face and the one outer face. So one thing you need to remind is like with, when you look at this list, you don't really need, know which one is outer but there are some, some rules you can think of for in, 
face inside, you have counterclockwise for like a one, two, three right here, and one, three, four, and one, four, two. And the outer face actually going opposite direction, two, four, three here, the clockwise. So if you can check the, the orientation, you can pick up the outer and inner face. And then next function is dual planar graph. What is dual planar graph is just, so you for, for planar graphs, you have faces, right? So one, two, three, four faces in this case. So we make face to vertex. And then if two face adjacent each other, then we connect those two faces with edges. So like here, right? And then this is actual dual graph of this planar graph. So let's look this function in action. Do you have planar graph G? And then I just turn on the vertex labels name. So now you got the dual graph. And as you can see, this vertex is one, two, three, actually the face. One, two, three, one, four, two, two, four, three, and one, three, four. So this is planar dual graph. And planar coloring, find planar coloring. So like other coloring function, you just need to find if you want to color this planar graph with different color, the adjacent faces, you just can learn find planar coloring. So you got the list corresponding to the planar face list. So here is the, the one of the simple example to color the faces. And then now I got into the control flow graph. So you have control flow graph. It's just like a, your flow chart when you're doing like a, the algorithm. So we first function is dominator vertex list. I briefly explain what is dominator. So for example, here we have given root to one and then we are interested to find immediate, immediate dominator of five. So go through to this graph, we just look at the paths that all the paths that are going to five. So here we have two paths, two passes getting to five. And then when you look at the vertex between the passes, you see all paths must passing through two. So this is dominator. In this case, only one, but even there are many, you can have the case when you have many dominators, then you just pick up the smallest one, which we call immediate dominator. Smallest means nearest to the, the actual interesting the vertices. So in this case, two. So this is the immediate dominator. And this function giving you list of immediate dominator corresponding to vertex list. So two and one is only dominator. And then we have other function called dominator tree graph. What this is, is when you have vertex and do, the dominators, you can form the tree graph out of those two vertices like this one. So for example, if I just draw nicely here, so here's two dominator and then this orange dotted line actually the edge of your dominator tree graph. And then here's some improvement we have in version 13. We kind of adding some new algorithm for grab isomorphism area. So here I will briefly show you what improvement we have. So if you just check the timing of canonical graph, in, in previous version, we have had time to compute the canonical graph for some, some large size of graph. For now in 13, you can see even we increasing number of vertices, the time actually dramatically improved. Like uh, here, now we take 0.5 seconds before it's 82 seconds. So this tendency throughout the, or most of the isomorphic function, isomorphism function, and here isomorphic graph Q, then you, you can also see the, the time difference is kind of dramatic for in general, the large graph. And another one is like a 
grab automorphism group, same tendency, right? And then another improvement is find graph up isomorphism between the two graphs. So it's the time difference is keep increasing, I mean, a lot when grep get larger. Okay, last, so we extend many, I mean, in, in Wolfram list, Wolfram Mathematica, there are many areas that actually the graph and network involved. And for example, like one is, is tree structure that is introduced in version 13. And also the molecule and tree, right? Binal tree, all those tree structure. This is the working with graph well. So if you wrap it, those new object with graph, then you got the graph, which is kind of natural. And also graph plot, graph distance, other graph function also work with tree expression where, and then, yeah, this one, like I just say, binary tree, those tree structure, you can also form those tree, tree object from graph easily. So graph network area is the expand, extended to many different Wolfram mathematic, I mean, Wolfram language, also those extended area come into grab easily and work together well. So this is all for today. Then let's look at some, some questions we have. So if the subgraph is literally a pattern, why isn't it the second argument like all other functions which find pattern in expression? Well, I, I, I just using pattern, but it, pattern here means more like a, some topological structure, not you know mathematical pattern with on the bar something like that. And is it possible to manually draw the line and their intersection point and then analyze the graph with this tool or do tool set up the graph rather than the user? Uh, you mean I'm not exactly sure what you mean by draw on the paper or I mean it can be possible for example, image, we have graph that turn image to graph. And then even you have some, yeah, it's possible to do with little programming in certain cases. And then what embedding do the planar graph function use? So for example, so the planar face list is using embedding of graph if it's given, then it using the, the given embedding. So for example, if it's automatic, we using embedding from planar graph. So we have function called planar graph that giving you automatically giving you planar embedding in different scenario. But if you specify vertices or sudden the, the embedding, then first it check that given embedding is planar or not. If it's planar, then we using the given embedding at the beginning. So is there support for highlighting faces with highlight graph? Mm, not now, because you know the face is more like geometry. We, in, in general, graph doesn't have a face. So for method algorithm library, yeah, we will cover that later, probably in, in, in the office hours. So planar functions up to non-strain line embedding, uh, not this time you can non-strain line embedding. Mm, not, not this time, yeah, not currently, but yeah, that's kind of interesting. So what does it do if the given embedding is not planar, but the graph is? So if given embedding is not planar, then, then it will fail, yeah. But you can set up this automatic or something because we, we are giving the priority of the, the embedding of given graph. And another question I have is there a future for scene graph at Wolfram? I'm not sure what exactly the scene graph means here. Oh, I see, yeah, 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 yeah. Scene graph, I think, 
we have kind of a scene graph in, in the, the package called, what is that? The, uh, the game engine. So we already have one. Yeah, unit link. Yeah, unit link has the scene graph. So that's the one of the example. And yeah, yeah, we can discuss about algorithm in, in office hour. Probably, yeah, there's better time for algorithm in graph coloring. Yeah. And then don't forget to talk about constructive solid geometry at 12 o'clock, a minute from now. So constructive solid geometry involves some graph also in some function convert your CSG called CSG legend to the graph structure. So it's related talk. Okay. Then thank you for attending the, the talk and see you at the office hours. Thanks a lot.